I love that we are part of an apostolic church. I love the fact that God is doing some incredible things and we're all part of this apostolic family. So I want to encourage you to pray for the other locations. Pray for the other location pastors. God's doing incredible things. I'm hearing incredible testimonies, but they need your prayers. They need your prayers. We, we all should be praying for one another. Amen? Yes. Amen. That's my plug for the, uh, the location. So turn with me to Matthew chapter 11. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 11 and verse 1 to 6. I'm going to read it. Matthew chapter 11. When Jesus had finished instructing his 12 disciples... He went on from there to teach and to preach in their cities. Now, when John heard in prison about the deeds of Christ, he sent word to his disciples and said to him, Are you the one who is to come or shall we look for another? And Jesus answered and said, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear and the dead are raised up. The poor have the good news Preach to them, and blessed is the one who is not offended by me. Amen. You know, as I said, I, I love what I see God doing in this season, in this hour, in our, in our church community and on the earth right now. There, there is such a, a, a growing sense of revival, a growing sense of the presence of God. If you've been around over the last few weeks, you know that we've been focusing. There's been a, it's like the Holy Spirit has been highlighting this aspect of the presence of God. His presence is our priority. You know, and we we see that in our services. We see that in the sermons that we've been preaching about and and that we've heard lately of of just honouring and acknowledging the presence of God. There's something about the presence of God that, that uh, marks us, that, w- that God wants to mark his people with the presence of God. He wants to mark us. And I love what God's doing in me. I can feel this drawing. I, f- I-, I feel that God's got so much more for us. But I also feel that, you know, it's like God is bringing us back to the simplicity of just being in his presence, of just worshipping him alone, of being a person of one thing. And we, this is some of the themes that we've been hearing about lately over these last few weeks of, of coming back to the simplicity of just devotion to Jesus, yep. sitting in, in his presence, being a person of one thing, being a person who just loves his presence, making his presence our priority in our lives. Amen? Yep. But, you know, there's something also about this season that God's inviting us into a deeper That's sense right. of Awareness of his presence. And this morning I want to talk to you about living in awareness. Living in awareness. It's so funny because, you know, for, for those of us who are preachers, whenever you, whenever you start preparing a sermon and you think, okay, God's been speaking to me about, about something specific, God tends to like do that in your own heart and in your own life as well. And it's like, you know, I've been thinking about uh, this whole idea of being aware of his presence, and then God starts speaking to me about that. I'm going to share a little bit about that this morning. But, you know, I, I feel like as a church that, um, who here likes Star Trek? I feel like we're in this season to boldly go where no one's gone before. <laughs> God has got so much more for us. He's got so much more for you and me to experience, to encounter. You know, you can sort of feel that the atmosphere is pregnant with the possibilities, with what God has for each and every one of us and for us as a, as a church community. You can feel that God's up to something. Amen? And so living with awareness. I believe we're, we're living in a time where people are so unaware. <laughs> where people are so unaware. Unaware of how they're coming across. They're so self-obsessed and self-absorbed. But, you know, that can actually creep into our lives as, as believers and as 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 you know, people of God, that we can become so self-focused or self-centered. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 21, it says, For all seek their own and not the things of others, not the things which are of Christ Jesus. You know, awareness is about living fully alive, yeah, fully alive, being conscious, having a perception and an understanding of God, 
of where God is at work in us and where God is at work in others. It's about being attentive, about being sensitive to his presence, living with that sensitivity of, God, what are you up to? What are you doing? I want to live with that awareness of his presence on my life because he's in me for my sake, but he's upon me for your sake. You know, so firstly, I want to talk about living with an awareness of God, his presence. I, 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 want to, I don't know about you, but I want to live with such an acute awareness yeah. Yeah. and sensitivity of God 24-7, not just in church services. You know, I love what God is doing in our corporate settings, in our corporate services. But the invitation that God has for you and for me is to walk each and every day with this sense of awareness yeah. of his presence. You know, so how do we become more aware of God? I'm glad you asked. We change the way we think. When Jesus started his ministry, what did he say? He said, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And he performed signs and wonders and miracles. When he sent out the 70 disciples, he gave them the shortest service, uh, sermon ever. He said, repent and preach the kingdom. Then heal the sick, you know, uh, uh, raise the dead. And um, so what does this word repent mean? It means change the way you think. Change your perceptive your, your perception. It means shift your awareness. Yeah. Shift your awareness. This is this massive shift that needs to take place in our lives. We need to shift our awareness onto not what God doesn't seem to be doing or on the enemy, but what God is doing. Yeah. 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 You know, here we see, let's look at this scripture, John the Baptist. I mean, he, he was in prison. He's, uh, he asked his disciples to go to Jesus and ask him, are you the Christ? I mean, this is John the Baptist. Yeah. He was the one who first recognised the Christ. Yeah. He was the one who said, behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. He was the one that baptised Jesus and he saw the Spirit of God descending on him. I mean, he was the one that prepared the way of the Lord. Yeah. He was the one that Jesus said that there's no greater uh, man on the planet up, unto Jesus, uh, up to Jesus except uh, John. So, I mean, here he was. He's, he's now in prison and he's asking his disciples. He's saying, hey, go and ask Jesus, are you the one? Are you the one? Are you the Messiah? What happened to John? I mean, obviously he was in prison. But what happened to him? I mean, he had one of the greatest revelations of who Christ was. What happened to him? He was more aware of where he was and the negative than he was of the signs and wonders and miracles. His awareness was not on heaven's reality, but on the situation he was in. How do we know this? By Jesus' response to John the Baptist. He said... Go and tell John the things you hear and see. The blind see, the lame walk, the deaf can hear, the dead are raised to life. Jesus was trying to get John to shift his awareness. Yeah. He's trying to get John to shift his focus. Let's, let's, get, yeah. let's get your awareness not on what, where you are, not on the things of the natural. Yeah. Let's get you to shift your awareness on the things of the spirit. You know, whatever you focus on, Whenever you focus on what God hasn't done, you undermine your own confidence and faith in the Lord. Whenever you focus on what it seems that God hasn't done, it undermines your confidence and your faith in the Lord. That's why testimonies are so important. That's why we love sharing testimonies. That's why we love sharing about what, the, uh, what God has done in our lives. And if you haven't got any testimonies, testimonies go and pray. <laughs> What did I say? <laughs> if you haven't got any testimonies, go and ask someone, hey, tell me about what God's doing in your heart. Tell me about what God's doing in your life. Read scripture. The gospels are full of the testimony of Jesus, the good news of Jesus. You know, most people are more aware of their problems rather than God's solution. Let me go step, one step further. Most people are more aware of other people's problems rather than really realizing that God has shown them so that they can be a part of the solution. So often, we focus on the negative in someone else. We focus on the problems in someone else instead of, hang on, I could have a solution here. I can have, uh, I can have uh, God's perspective or heaven's perspective for that person. You know, we shouldn't be enamored by the enemy in his work. 
We need to be more aware of his presence, more aware of the Father's voice than the voice of the enemy. Jesus, in John chapter 5, verse 19, he says this. He said, Most assuredly, I say to you, the Son can do nothing of himself, but whatever he sees the Father do, for whatever he does, the Son also does in like manner. You know, Jesus was more aware of the Holy Spirit than he was of the enemy. He was more aware of the Holy Spirit and his voice, the Father's voice, than he was of the enemy, than he was of, uh, you know, the enemy's negativity. That's why, like I said, testimonies are so important for your spiritual life, because what you are most aware of, you host. What you're most conscious of, you release. You release in your own life. You know, self-awareness as a Christian is being aware of where God is at work in you. It's not self-help. It's a growing awareness of the Spirit of God at work in us. And God is working in you. Turn to the person next to you and say, hey, God's working in you. Just tell them, God's working in you. (laughs) The question is, where is He at work in you? What is He doing in your heart right now? You know, how, how do we live with a greater awareness of his presence in, in our lives? Number one, we live in response and not in reaction. <laughs> we live in response to the Holy Spirit. We live in responding to his voice. We don't live in reaction. And we all know people that live out of reaction, maybe ourselves. Listen to this, 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. It says, examine yourselves to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Or do you not realise this about yourselves, that Jesus Christ is in you, unless indeed you fail to meet the test? You know, God is at work in us, but we need to examine ourselves. Where is God at work in me right now? And one of the keys is, is asking yourself, am I living in response or am I living in reaction? Am I living in reaction to things? <laughs> response versus reaction. You know, David prayed this in Psalm 139. He said, uh, he said, God, investigate my life to see if there's any wicked way in me and put me to the test. You know, self-awareness is the first step in personal and spiritual transformation. God is at work in you. He's at work in you and he's wanting to transform you from the inside out. And so self-awareness is, is asking yourself, God, where are you at work in me? What are the things that you're putting your finger on in me? What are the reactions? You know, I love this. I've been, as I was preparing this, this just this week, um, I had, you know, a, a few interactions and a few uh, things happened this week and I was tempted to react. <laughs> I was tempted to, to respond with reaction out of emotion. And God's so good because... Yeah. You know, he, he reminds me, hey, Steve, you're going you're gonna to be preaching about this. You better not live in reaction. I want you to live in response to my spirit. And, you know, so often God does, it, does this in our lives. That's why it's so good at the end of the day, as you're having your quiet time with the Lord, to, to ask yourself, okay, God, where were you at work in me during this day? Did I respond? Or did I react? Did I respond in faith, in living with an awareness of your presence? Or did I uh, react out of emotion and out of fear and out of ego? You know, self-awareness is is recognising that in ourselves. Where am I responding out of reaction, you know, out of ego? Or am I responding to the Spirit of God? Amen? I love this. Matthew chapter 7, verse 3, Jesus uh, it talks about the whole log in your own eye and the speck in someone else's eye. Do you remember that scripture? And he's saying, hey, why are you worrying about the speck in someone else's eye when you've got a log in your own eye? That scripture really is not really about judgment. It's about self-awareness. God is, it, it, Jesus was encouraging his disciples to be aware. Where is God at work in you? Where is the Holy Spirit at work in you? Know yourself. <laughs> Self-awareness, as I said, is the first step in real inner transformation. That's why, this is what I say, every irritation is an invitation. (laughs) Every irritation, every frustration in your life is actually an invitation from the Lord. 
He's actually inviting you into freedom, into wholeness, into finding out where's that irritation coming from. It's coming from maybe your ego or maybe your false self or maybe a, a hurt or maybe you have to go back and think, why am I constantly reacting this way? What, what's that trigger in me? What's that button in me? When people push your buttons, they're your buttons. <laughs> they're no one else's buttons. They're your buttons. And so growing in a sense of awareness of where the Spirit is, what the Spirit is doing is realising, oh, that's a button there. That, that's been pushed. I need to bring that to God. God, why am I reacting like this? Is this good? It's getting really quiet here. <laughs> you know, like I said, did you know that God tests you? He allows things and situations to happen to you so that he can change you, so he can transform you. <laughs> this has been self-aware, God aware in your life. What area in my life is he, is he putting his finger on? What are the triggers, the reactions, those, those issues in my life? Am I living from a sense of responsiveness to his yeah. spirit, a responsiveness to his presence? I love the presence of God, don't yeah. you? Yeah. I love the nearness of God. But the invitation is to live right. in that awareness <laughs> and that presence of God, to live with such an awareness right. of the presence of God. So living from heaven's reality is having an awareness of the dove in you and upon you. Yes. Yeah. That's why I wore this shirt today. Yeah. See the dove shirt? <laughs> you know, listen to this, John chapter 1, verse 32. When Jesus was baptised, the Bible said that the Holy Spirit descended from heaven and rested on, on him and remained. John said this, John bore witness, he said, I saw the spirit of descending from heaven like a dove and he remained on him. He remained on him. Jesus never grieved the Holy Spirit. He never quenched the Holy Spirit. He lived with an awareness of the dove on him. What would it look like for you to live with an awareness that a dove is sitting on your shoulder? How would you walk? Yeah. Carefully. Yeah. <laughs> you would walk very carefully with an awareness of the dove on your shoulder. You know, Jesus only lived according to the Father's voice, the Spirit's direction, heaven's awareness, not the enemy, not frustration, not emotion. He wasn't enamoured by the enemy. He lived according to the Spirit. And that's the invitation. And he did this as a man. Yeah. He was God, but he was fully man as well. And so he's inviting us into that place of living with an awareness of heaven, living with an awareness of the Spirit of God. You know, so many of us are more aware of the enemy and the negative and the issues of society rather than his presence. Right. And I can see this by, by conversations. What are you most aware of? So, you know, some Christians are more aware of the negative, more aware of Satan, more aware of the, the works of the enemy and everything that, you know, all the bad stuff happening instead of more aware of God, more aware of heaven's reality. And this is the invitation that God wants us to shift our awareness, to shift our mindset, to live, to walk with an awareness of heaven's reality. This is so, this is so important, so important for us. I, I, I really feel that this is so important for each one of us as a church right now in this season. Listen to this. Whatever you dwell and meditate on, will affect your atmosphere and, the de and your demeanor and behavior. Whatever you, that's why you can tell, you can feel a person and what they're going through. Right. So you can feel a depressed person. It's like, oh, you can, you can see they're carrying something. Yeah. They're carrying something. And the opportunity for us is to release heaven in their lives. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6, it says, We are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, far above all principalities and powers. I love that. It doesn't say we're standing. It says we're seated. Yeah. It's a position. That's our position as believers. We're seated in heavenly places, far above all else. So we get to bring heaven's reality to every situation. Yeah. We get to bring heaven's solutions for every situation in our lives. We get to bring heaven's solution for every problem in our lives because we're seated in heavenly places. So, so whenever you're facing a challenge or a major, major situation or issue, 
Take a moment and remind yourself where you're seated. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Where am I seated? That's right. I'm seated in heavenly places. Far above situations, far above these challenges, far above principalities and powers. That's a shift of, of awareness. So Jesus said to John's disciples, he said, get him to shift his focus. Get him to shift his focus. Heaven's reality. Lift up your eyes. Become more aware of God. Aware of what God is doing. And, you know, we need to train ourselves to do that. We need to walk this out in real time. There's a training that's happening. There's a discipleship. It's, it's not optional. <laughs> this is the discipleship that we're on. Amen. So how else do we live with an awareness of his presence? We prioritize his presence over principles. You know, a spirit of religion will always stifle the presence of God in your life. It's egocentric. You rely on man-made principles or the letter of the law. We say the Bible says this, the Bible says that, the Bible says this. But remember, Jesus said, hang on, all scripture leads to relationship with him. So, so when we read scripture, when we study scripture, it all should bring us to a, a relationship yeah. with him. Yeah. It all should lead us to presence, yeah. presence over principles. Yeah. You might say, well, I live by the word of God, the principles in the Bible. I live by a belief system. But that's great. But Jesus didn't invite us to a belief system. He invited us into a relationship. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. He invited us into a relationship with the Holy Spirit, with Him, with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We sang that this morning, the Trinity. Beautiful. That's what He's inviting us into. A living, vibrant relationship with a person. Not a set of doctrines or principles or beliefs. That's why we get to camp around His presence. We don't camp around a sermon. We camp around His presence. We're like, God, what are you saying? What are you doing? What, where, are you, where are you at work in my heart, in my life? That's living with a sense of awareness. You know, later on in this scripture, in, in Matthew chapter 11, Jesus has this amazing statement. He says, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, but the violent take it by force. So he's saying, hey, you've got to push through. You've got a war. You know, how many know that we're in a war? We're in a war. We've got to fight the good fight of faith. But then a few verses on, in that same chapter, he says, hey, come to me and rest. If you're heavy laden and you're burdened down, come to me and rest. Take my yoke upon you and rest. But then a few verses before, he's saying, hey, you've got to fight. You've got to fight. So what is he saying? Rest or fight? Is he saying you've got to push through? You've got to you know, fight the good fight of faith? Or is he saying, hey, be still and know? Is he saying you've got to pray in tongues? Or is he saying you've got to be contemplative? Which one is it? That's the point. It's relationship. <laughs> it's relationship with God. It's like, God, what are you saying to me right now? What is appropriate for my, this season of my life? Are you, t- are you asking me to press in? Are you asking me to fight the good fight of faith? Do I need to go on a season of prayer and fasting and praying in the Spirit? Or are you asking me to be contemplative and sit and wait and be still and know that I am God? That's living with a, priori- you know, with a priority of presence yeah. over principles. Yeah. Because there's wonderful principles in, this, in Scripture, but we're called to live according to presence. Right. What is God saying to me right now? Right now. I love this. Is this helping? Yeah. It's helping me. <laughs> hey, I, I work, like I said, I, I'm, I work with pastors every day. I have the privilege... Of, of working with pastors and I love meeting up with them and talking to them about health and soul and, and care and leadership and ministry and the complexities of pastoring. But by far, I love talking about awareness. I love saying, hey, where's God at work in you right now? What's God doing in your heart right now? What's he putting his finger on right now? Where is he at work in your heart right now? What's, what's God saying to you right now? It's good to ask ourselves these questions. God, what are you doing in me right now? And asking, so, hey, what's God doing in your heart right now? That's living with an awareness yep. of his presence yep. right now. It comes back to awareness. I, feel, I really feel God's highlighting this for us right now. Living with an awareness of the dove. Right. 
living with an awareness of his presence yes. every single moment of the day. Yep. Every single moment on our, not only on our Sundays, but on our Mondays, our Tuesdays, yeah. when we're at work, yeah. when we're at home, when we're with our, uh, our families, when we're in the car, living with a sense of awareness. Yeah. A sense of awareness, living out of responsiveness to his presence. Yeah. Living in, it, with responsiveness, not reaction. Not reaction. God, where are you working me? What are those things that you're doing in my heart? This is so important, so important. It's, and he, he, here's, the, here's, the, here's the truth. It's your responsibility to cultivate this growing awareness of his presence. It's your responsibility. A life of intimacy is a life of awareness. You know, we talk a lot about your devotion, your intimacy with the Lord. But it, and, and it's, it's true, it's, it's your responsibility to know God, to cultivate that knowledge of God, to cultivate that intimacy with the Lord and cultivate that intimacy with God. What do you, where are you at work in my heart right now? You know, a, a number of years ago, I, um, I, uh, I found this incredible parable in Scripture. Matthew chapter, chapter 25, it talks about that the parable of the, the ten virgins, the five wise and the five foolish. So for those of you who know this parable, Jesus tells this uh, story about there was five wise virgins, five foolish virgins, and they all had lamps and they all had oil in their lamps. Lamp speaks of ministry. Oil speaks of a relationship with God. And they all, you know, um, they all were together. And then the bridegroom came. And they were all like, okay, we've got to get to the wedding because the bridegroom's here. And they all trimmed their wicks and they all got their lamps ready. But the ones, the foolish virgins had no oil. They had, they had, not, they had not cultivated or they had not cultivated a relationship with the Holy Spirit. They had no oil. And they said to the, the five wise, hey, give us some of your oil. Give us some of your oil because we need some oil. And the, the five wise said, no, we're not going to give that. And I remember this reading it, I thought, that's mean. <laughs> and if I've got spare oil, I'll give, it to, I'll give it to you. If you ask me for oil, I'll give it to you. And I remember, you know, being really perplexed about that parable. What does it mean? God, what are you saying to me in this parable? And the Lord spoke to me really clearly and he said, Steve, oil is your relationship with the, with, with the Holy Spirit. Oil is your awareness of the presence of God. And here's the thing. You cannot, you cannot transfer your relationship with God to someone else. You've got to cultivate that for yourself. You've got, you can't transfer your history with God to someone else. You've got your own history with God. And each one of us are creating history with God. We're creating a relationship with God. We're carving out time in his presence. We're becoming more aware of his presence. We're creating our own relationship with God. But you cannot transfer that to someone else. You've got to go and buy, our oil, buy oil for yourself. You've got to carve out your own time with the Lord. You've got to uh, work on uh, cultivating a life of awareness with the Holy Spirit. You cannot transfer that. It's non-transferable. I can't pray for you and I'm just going to pray and believe that you'll get this. No, no, no. You've got to do that for yourself. That's your responsibility. You can't give away your oil. That's your own history with God. That's your own history with God. You know, you're the temple of the Holy Spirit. You're the temple of the Holy Spirit. God, in, in his amazing wisdom, he chose out of everywhere in the universe... He chose you to dwell in. He chose you to be the temple of, of the Holy Spirit. Isn't that amazing? You know, Paul said, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives and dwells with you. Lives and dwells in you. And so the invitation that God has for us this morning is to live with an awareness of his spirit. To come into an awareness of the dove. Lord, let me live with an awareness of your spirit on me. You know, you are the ark right now. We talk about the ark of his presence. And we've been talking about this over the last few weeks. The presence of God, the ark of his presence, making his presence our priority. But you know what? You're the ark. You're the ark. 
That's where he dwells. He lives and dwells in you. So the question is awareness. Are you aware of it?